Hello and welcome to episode five of Inside Irons. We did it. It's a survival special this week. I'm Chris Gold and joining me, the Julian Dix to my Tim Breaker, the big man Carlton Cole is here. He's back and joining the festivity, seeing as it's confirmed we're a Premier League club next season. It's a man who's got experience of confirming West Ham's Premier League status at Old Trafford. Marlon Harewood is here. How you doing, Marlon? I'm good, and you? I am over the moon. I feel so stress-free. I feel good, like a good, new good. man. I've been released. Did you watch? Re- did you relaxed. Watch? Yeah. Relaxed. Did you watch West Ham do the business at Old Trafford? I Confirm did, indeed. It? I did, indeed. What an evening. I mean, how well? I mean, it's been great, isn't it? Ever since Inside Iron started. It's good watching. It's just, it, it, it has. It's, 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 it's no, there's no coincidence there, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no coincidence. Just bringing the good vibes and the good feelings to the fans. Just, do you know, know what I mean? Been talking and all sorts of yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're spreading the good vibes. Carlton, what a week it's been. We've had Watford and Man United since we last spoke. I can't even... Uh, I'm so elated right now. I can't elated. even. You've been learning some new words. Yeah, yeah. I, coming out with some I, big words. I, you. Well, I've been around David James. Last <laughs> week, <right? laughs> David James has been bringing these f effects. <laughs> I don't even so, have to spell it, but uh, some big words. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I'm just so um, happy right now, obviously, because we've secured a Premier League status, yeah. and we are going to be working in the Premier League next season, thanks to the lads, and the lads have um, done everything in their power to make that happen for us. Sure. Yeah. yeah, Marlon, you're a match day m- ambassador for West Ham, a Premier League match day ambassador. I was well, you know, if we were going down, I would, I'd worry about your transfer request coming in, but it's glad to know. <laughs> no, I'm staying. Yeah, staying. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm pleased. I'm Premier League myself. match day ambassador. <laughs> Excellent. Well, coming up on the show today, we'll have an analysis of that magnificent four points we gained against Watford and Manchester United. And we'll be talking to Thomas Suchek and Spencer Owen. But lads, the last time we were all together on a West Ham piece of content, was that magnificent festive day out at Fulham at Craven Cottage last season where we won and we had a little away day diary. Shall we remind ourselves of that magnificent piece of video content? we go that was the day out at Craven Cottage Fulham great win there and before we got to the ground we went to a pub beforehand and it was like the Beatles landing in America when you two walked in <laughs> it was actually people were so excited was, I was like this is dangerous <laughs> at first security. we didn't think that but towards the end it got a bit dangerous <laughs> I couldn't find Colton. <laughs> he got separated. <laughs> he separated yeah. all of them. Where was I? I was, I was like looking for him. I couldn't see anyone. I went to the toilet, but it took me an eternity to get back to the bar. <laughs> uh, the other thing is, well, after that, we went out to China White's. Bit of a nice. 90s nightclub. I can't believe it's we were still around. Did we? Bit, yeah. of a, bit, of a, bit of a throwback <laughs> See, for you. I don't remember that. <laughs> did we go to China White? Yeah, yeah we, we did. China White. Bloody hell. Didn't have to even... queue, didn't have to queue. Oh, yeah, yeah it's Colton. Colton. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, but that's not the point, though. I can't, <laughs> the point can't is, I don't even memories. remember. Because your brother, the, your brother came with us. Huh? Your brother came with us as well. I just can't remember. So many nights out, eh? So many nights out. <laughs> Reminiscing. <laughs> um, let's look back over the last week. Uh, Marlon, start with the Watford game. Biggest game we've played in years, but it pr- looked like the pressure was off. You would never have guessed. No, we would never have guessed. The lads looked so... W- I, think they, I think they found their formula, how they wanted to play and how they wanted to do things. And, and I've been speaking to Antonio and the gaffer told him, I don't want you out of that box. And when you've got that mentality that you're going to be in that box, when that ball gets in it, he's got chances to score goals. And the last couple of games, he hasn't had that chance, but when he gets that thought process, right, I'm, I'm in the box now and that ball's going to come to me. And so it came to him the first one and he scored. And then after that, it's like a relief because the lads haven't been scoring first. They've been like um, getting under pressure and trying to, trying to get a goal near to the end. But because they got that goal first, it's like the pressure was off them. Uh, Carlton, every week you come on here and you, you offer praise to Mikel Antonio. And every week he just seems to get better and better. I told you, he's, li- he's listening. Yeah. <laughs> he's listening. Honestly, <laughs> I'm not mentoring him, but I'm mentoring him in my own way through Inside Irons. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's watching us. So look, every time I say that, I big him up because he's. I just see myself in him because hard working. Um, he's got the spirit of West Ham inside him. Proud of his football, and he just wants to go out there and do do the job for it. Yeah. Not just himself, but the, his teammates as well. And that's where he is getting a lot of joy because now, as you saw yesterday, when he was. Um, taking the penalty, 
I was like, oh my gosh, really? Is he taking the penalty in front of um, Nobes? Yeah. But Nobes has seen the effort that he that he's been putting in in the tr- at work at, at the training ground in the games. He's been scoring um, yeah. free, like free scoring. So Nobes has probably just gone. Do you know what? Before the game, I, I heard this, he said before the game, um, I'll let you take a penalty if we do have a, a a penalty. So that just shows you the testament that Nobes has given to him and saying, listen. Go and do your thing. And because he, he, can, to keep see, he can see him. He can he's see him. Thriving. Because, yeah. like, as a striker, once you, as Colton, I know, once you get that first one, everything just, like, it just flows. It just yeah. keeps flowing through. Well, he's got eight goals since the restart. Only Raheem Sterling has got eight. So they're joint first together. He's one of the, he's like, what an asset to West Ham. One of the form com- the strikers in the country. No, and the season's ending. <laughs> I, know, I know, he probably don't want it to end, to be fair. He probably don't want it to end. But, uh, but do you know what? For for him to be like talked about like this, I'm just so, so happy for him because yeah, he deserves it. You see how hard he works. He works so hard for the team, and it's now when you work that hard, and there's been times when he's he's been working hard like that, but he's not getting any rewards at the end of it. But now he's getting the rewards. You got Nobs giving him penalties. Yeah, Nobs never gave me a penalty in my life. <laughs> How about me, Nobs? Yeah, see. Yeah, it's a different situation. I was penalty taker, yeah, so I mean, there was no, there was no one taking it, it off me. It just shows Nobs has matured now. It's, <laughs> yeah. not, it's not about me, me, me no more. He's a captain. He wants the, yeah. he wants the, the boys to do well. So, But I, I wish he could have just given me one penalty at least. <laughs> But I did miss the last one that he gave me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's, that's why he won't well, do it. That's go. probably the reason why. There we go. He ain't got on them again. Pepper. <laughs> well, a major part of our success over the last few games has been our new Czech superstar. We call up with one of the biggest Colt Hammers heroes of the season, Thomas Suchek. Here is Bowen, left footed, teasing delivery. Far post, it's 2 0. Rising header at the far post, Thomas Suchek. Welcome to the show, Thomas Suchek. Thomas, we've seen your goals, we've seen your box-to-box work, we've seen your tough tackling. We as West Ham fans are loving what you're doing for the club, but how have you found the last six months? Hello, nice to see you. The uh, yeah, last six months was uh, very incredible for me because uh, in the start it was a uh, uh, little difficult, but uh, after this uh, last, uh, I, I don't know, maybe uh, six, uh, seven games, uh, when we uh, played very good, so I am, uh, yeah, I am very happy that uh, I uh, could go to West Ham and I I could uh, play uh, these games and uh, that we uh, stay up. West Ham, every West Ham fan I know loves what you're doing for the club, but obviously without a crowd, it may be difficult to know that as a player. Has many West Ham fans approached you like during lockdown to say you're doing such a great job? Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, it is uh, very strange when. Uh, uh, fans uh, are not at the stadium, but uh, we know that uh, uh, many fans uh, support us at home, and uh, we appreciate it uh, all, guys. And we uh, we would uh, been uh, very quickly to uh, get safety uh, for them. Uh, Thomas, the the Watford game had so much riding on it. Really important game, a lot of pressure on the players, but it looked like. There was no pressure at all. It looked like it was a really easy performance. Did it feel like that? Yes, yes. It was uh, for us. Uh, was a very uh, big pressure. Uh, uh, but uh, when we start uh, and when we uh, played uh, the game, it was uh, it was really good because in uh, in first ten minutes we uh, was winning uh, two zero and uh, they uh, uh, shoot uh, two three zero and uh, we feel. Yeah, like incredible, and uh, <laughs> believe uh, that uh, we uh, have to win, and uh, we believe uh, each other, and it was uh, so good. Thomas, that's brilliant. Um, listen, what are the lads calling you right now? What is what are they calling you in the changing rooms? Is it Thomas or is it Such? What's the what's your nickname, my what's friend? The boys uh, call me Thomas. Oh, uh, Thomas. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> I've called you differently by now. <laughs> Second name is like uh, Sochek. Uh, you spelled uh, very uh, uh, difficult, yeah? Because sometimes Sochek, sometimes Sochek, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> well, they might start calling you striker, the amount of goals you're scoring. You scored one against Watford. That header was incredible. You just seem to read it so well. You've been pleased the amount of goals you've been getting. Uh, yes, when I uh, saw the area uh, in front of me, uh, I trust... Uh, uh, to Jared uh, that he uh, uh, got uh, 
great ball for me and yeah uh, and i go uh, i get uh, i went immediately to uh, to the box and yeah i want a uh, score for west ham and for uh, for great uh, Uh, appearance for for all teams so uh, i i trust uh, jared and he, he uh, uh, sent me a uh, yeah a uh, really good ball so i had to only score <laughs> <laughs> uh, thomas the chelsea game seemed to be a massive turning point in our season getting that last minute winner do you feel like that was the moment things really turned around for us uh, yes uh, probably i think that uh, match uh, against chelsea Uh, was uh, very massive for us, and uh, this match uh, 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 got uh, too safety because uh, from this match uh, we uh, started to play uh, very well, uh, like a team, uh, not uh, too individual, but uh, everyone played for the team, and uh, the appearance uh, uh, was uh, getting improved. So. It was a really massive game and for, for us uh, the best uh, in uh, the uh, like uh, yeah the best for us. Thomas, are you a bit upset that the season's coming to an end? <laughs> yes, <laughs> because we started, <laughs> we started to play very well and uh, season is uh, is end. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's a good uh, chance for us for next season. So we we have yes. Think about uh, uh, these last games, and uh, for next season we can uh, postpone. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, Thomas Aston Villa on Sunday. Suddenly the pressure's off. We don't we don't have much to play for, but obviously Aston Villa are fighting for their lives. Are you looking forward to it? Yes, I'm looking forward because yeah, I'm looking forward for every game in Premier League, and uh, it is last game for us. And yeah, without pressure is a uh, good. Uh, Good uh, for us, but uh, we want uh, uh, end of the season uh, with uh, with win. So we uh, will do everything what we can uh, for winning, and hopefully uh, we can uh, yeah, finish the league uh, with win. Fantastic stuff, Thomas. Thank you for all your efforts this season. Congratulations on all your goals and fantastic work. And fingers crossed, we see plenty more of you in a West Ham shirt next season. Well done, Thomas. Well done, Thomas. Well done, see you. Friend. Well done. Bye. Helped on towards Hayward! Marlon Hayward gives West Ham United the lead. They're 12 minutes away from their first FA Cup final in 26 years. A real hammer blow for Middlesbrough. Can they recover in time? Ashton guarding it on. Hayward held off his man. Welcome, Marlon. 23rd of November 2003, Marlon Harewood signed to West Ham. I'm looking at the stats. You'd already scored 12 league goals for Forest by then. Yeah, we're flying. You're to on. Fair. You're on fire. It's good times. Good times. Did you have many options apart from West Ham when you, before you signed? I didn't know because I literally had a thing with my agent because growing up I used to hear all the lads talking about agents and stuff like that, and they used to promise them stuff, come to games. So I literally said to my agent, "I don't want to know anything. Like if you." The only time I want to know is when we get in the car and we go into a club. Yes. And, and West Ham there. was that one. He says, right, Marlon, we're going to West Ham. And so we went. Yeah. So I've been watching back old season reviews. Yeah. You were so good. You were so, when you watch those back, the highlights of every game, you're involved with every goal. You're so much bigger than everyone else, so much faster than everyone else. Like, you had the cheat code, didn't he? Thank you. The, the, the cheat code. It looks like a cheat code. <laughs> <laughs> like, cheat code. <laughs> 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 but it looked to me like you were so obviously a Premier League striker. It was so obvious. It's just good it, times. I felt, the felt good. I did feel good that the, the four years I was here. Yeah. It felt real good. First season, we lose the playoff final. Yeah. You know, what was the atmosphere like in that team that year? Because obviously we'd gone down, we'd lost a lot of players. It, to be fair, it was a bit strange because we had some top class players like Michael Carrick, Jermaine Defoe, David James, obviously we were talking about, um, PSC. There, there were some top players there, obviously, because trying to get back and um, back to the Premier League uh, and they obviously wanted to be there but the players that we had there and Pards brought me into this dressing room and I'm like right I've, I don't know how to be really because it's like I know what I can give but would the lads accept me so I had to like try and prove myself that I can be involved with Dun Hutchison, Steve Lomas these are all the lads that was in the, tough the, characters. Yeah, yeah. in the in the dressing room and especially after Don because he's like a proper joker yeah. every day so 
I sort of, but they made me welcome. So it was, it was nice. So every game I was playing, it was talking to me and guiding me how they wanted to do things. And it just felt good. We had David James on last week. I got the impression he was a little unsure of Alan Pardew, but I know that you love him. Every player loves a manager when he's playing. <laughs> That's, 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 that's the cheat code for that. Oh, yeah, that is true. Yeah, yeah. He said to me, Mile, like, you're going to be my number one. So I'm like... What? Straight, it's the same, the same day. Yeah, he you're going to be my me. number one. And then I ended up being so, number six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> so straight away from there, and I'm like, wow, God, OK, I'm going to go. But then I went into the dressing room and I've got all these characters, lads, in there. So I'm like, oh, OK, well, maybe he's just saying that to get me here. But then after he, he, he sort of repaid me and says, like, you're playing week in, week out. We had a lot of interesting, great times and some like sad times too under Alan Pardew. The playoff final, two thousand playoff semi-final 2004 against Ipswich. Second leg at home. I think yeah. we were 1-0 down after the first leg. What an insane atmosphere. The best atmosphere I ever heard at Upton crazy. Park. You were there crazy. that night. What yes, was it again. like to play? Yeah, again, that was Pards. Pards was like, he's sort of into that sort of thing, atmosphere and stuff. And he, I think he invested a lot of stuff to, to get the crowd going and bubbles and everyone screwing the music, lights and everything like that. So before the game, he, I think he got everyone all riled up and everything. And then the lads like, once you're going up to the park and you're walking out of the atmosphere, you cannot not want to play. And the lads produced, to be fair. But we lost the playoff final against Crystal Palace. Yeah, yeah, that, that was yeah. the first of a hat of appearances one. at Cardiff. Yeah. Three years in a row the season yeah. um, ended there. Second season, Teddy Sheridan turns up. And I, like, I noticed watching these season reviews back that you, Teddy, Bobby Zamora, wow. like three world-class strikers players, in the yeah. championship. Did it feel easy? week in, week out, playing some of these teams? Can I say yes? <laughs> <laughs> Without no repercussions? Yeah. <laughs> Not easy in that sense, but it, it felt comfortable because, like, you, I'm playing alongside Teddy Sheridan and yeah. Bobby Zamora. Mm. So I'm like, wow, this, I, this can't get any better. So I'm, like, raising my game, doing what I can do best, trying to help the lads around me because I form great partnerships with them. And to be fair, I, I love Teddy because he helped me out loads because I didn't score for the for probably nine games or 10 games. And in, we was, in training, we was like, we have like shooting sessions, me, Teddy, Bobby, D Dino, and we're like banging them all in all, week in, week out. And I said, I pulled him to the side. I said, look, I'm, I'm getting in the positions to score goals, but I'm just not scoring it. And he said to me, Mild, the time to worry is when you're not getting in the yeah, positions. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, well, and I'm like, what's he saying that for? Like, obviously he knew from where he used to grow up and play and that he, when he's in them positions, he can put them away. Yeah. But then my first goal, Teddy sets me up. Uh, and then they went on to score a hat-trick. So, wow. yeah, and I said to him after the game, I said, thank you. He said, I told you it would come. Yeah. And it's just, it, was, it was amazing being part of such a, him and Bobby and Dino, it's just, it was a good feeling at that time. Yeah, that, that 2000, that's your second season with the club. Like, we had some, like I say, highs and some lows. And uh, mm. the good times were really great and the crowds behind you, but down in the championship, there'd be times where there'd be like almost a poisonous atmosphere yeah. in there. How did you feel the kind of pressure of playing in front of that crowd at Upton Park? It was difficult because uh, the West Ham fans, they, 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 they expect so much. And I can understand it because once you've been a West Ham player, they, they want you to go out there and give your heart and soul, which, which we did, but some of the results didn't go our way. So they, they get a bit angry and upset about the situation. But I think the, the, the atmosphere and the, the team spirit that we had, I think we came through and come through really good with the, with the finals and semi-finals that we got to. And I think they realised that we've got a good team going on. Yeah, 2005, beat Preston in the player final. What a day. What an amazing day that was in was Cardiff. Really back, to, back in the promised land. What was it like to be there? It was unbelievable. That, that season was crazy. Because someone mentioned to me to the other week, because like, I was on the floor. Um, the cameras come on to me and I was like, ooh, that was a long old season. <laughs> <laughs> and which, a relief which, at the end, didn't which it? Which it was. Massive like, relief. Yeah, yeah, massively. Obviously, when we, when, after the game we finished, it's like, in your, my mindset, everything is like buzzing, I can't wait, like relief and just looking forward to next year. Yeah, I mean, obviously, and you know, we, we had a lot to look forward to. It was day. an unbelievable season that following season. And some of the players we signed, Yossi Benayoun, Paul Koncheski, Danny Gabadon, James Collins, Dean Ashton came in halfway through. We built an amazing team. It felt like we had such team spirit and the results just kept coming on yeah, the pitch. Yeah, the, the recruitment was so good. I think 
Paz, whoever did it, Paz had done his homework with that situation because all the lads had good characters. The dressing room was buzzing week in, week out. Mm. Um, you just wanted to go outside and train and be in Because we had like a group of lads that used to go out week in, week out to just like look after each other and everything like that. It showed on the pitch, like the atmosphere that we had. Great bond. Yeah, it all came down 2006 to the FA Cup final back in Cardiff for the, yeah, first, yeah. the final of the hat trick of appearances. Heartbreak. But Marlon, you told me something about that extra time. Chance falls to you on your favoured foot. You hit it, I think, just over the bar. What, and I'm not sure this has ever been shared on official West Ham channels, but what was the reason you missed that chance? I broke my fifth metal tarsal. You had a broken foot oh, on the mate. pitch. So you're doing so. a David Hay, geese. Yes, mate. Is that what you're blaming <laughs> it on? <laughs> I had a broken toe. Yeah. <laughs> well, you didn't. You couldn't take a penalty no, in the shootout no, either. You were penalty like, taker. I'm trying to remember vaguely. If it was 10, 15 minutes before the end of the extra time, I think I went over my foot. Something happened, and then I was just limping after that. And really? we had no yeah. subs, mm. so I couldn't go off. So I'm oh, just mate. hobbling around the pitch on the FA Cup final. So you took one for the team. So, but and then corner. So I'm just like hobbling in the box. So I thought, let me just. I'm going to stay at the back stick bring a defender with me mm. and everyone, all the major boys in the box yeah. and then I'm looking and the ball's coming. It's, it's come to coming, you. It's coming <laughs> and it's come to me. So I'm just like, just swung, at it. swung a leg at it. Yeah, half-heartedly because uh, you didn't want to, yeah. Uh, oh, well. So close, what a slide indoors moment. I should have gone to the front stick then it wouldn't have come to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, would have avoided it. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, 2007, your last season with us was the season of the great escape that ended at Old Trafford with West Ham confirming their Premier League status on the last day. What a roller coaster of the season that was as well. It was quite. It was interesting to be fair because obviously Pards left and everyone was a bit downhearted about that. Um, then Carlos Tevez and Javier joined us, and then Curbs come join us, which was interesting because hearing some of the lads talk about his managerial skills and stuff and how he wants to do things. But a couple, I think it was like ten games left of the season. We sorted our differences out, and then we went on a on a unbeaten run. Yeah. Why'd you leave? You didn't have to leave. We loved you here. I loved it here, mate. I loved it here, but it's just one of them times that I've made a decision in my career. I wanted to move on. Um, we had a lot of strikers was, then yeah. as yeah, well. So, so we, like, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, you were on the I scene. Was six, I was sixth choice. <laughs> <laughs> I was buzzing to see him leave. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, yeah, that's one down. Close to the first team. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Do you want to lift wherever you go? Yeah, where you go? Where you go, Jeez? I'll take you. <laughs> oh, I'll take you, Paddy, to the station. Let's go up north. All right, cool. <laughs> so that's one of, one of the reasons. Yeah. <laughs> give, give Colton a chance. Um, <laughs> let's talk about some of the core questions we ask all our guests. So who was your favourite teammate? Favourite teammate? Personality-wise. Oh, I can't. I, can't. I, I got on with everybody. Um, it's hard. I can't really, because I got on with Bobby, my yeah, strike partner. Loads, loads of characters. All there, of like. us. Nigel, Anton. Mm. I love my Anton was my roomie. I love him to bits. Yeah. He was amazing. We got on with everyone. Ginge, everybody. Matty. So yeah. it's, it's hard to can't pick. pick. No, sorry. Uh, what about your most underrated teammate? Someone who did a magnificent job but doesn't necessarily get the credit for it. Matty Everton. Yeah. Yeah. Matty Everton. Yeah. Like, so some of my goals, I, I thank to him, really, like in memories, like the Arsenal one at home. The Arsenal one that caused the rift between Pards and yeah, Wenger? Yeah, like mm. Matty Everton. Like, majority of my goals, I think, come from Matty Everton. Yeah. And he doesn't get mentioned. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, what do you know he, what it is? When I played with him, like, you, just get, you just need to get in the box. So, as a striker, we'll come and show, we'll lay it off, yeah. and we know that Matty's bombing on. Yeah? yeah, and he was like a proper winger. Yeah. Do you know what Spe I mean? He's so pacey down so the So pacey, but he done... A winger's job. job yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Nowadays, you see the wingers coming in and doing all that cutting in, but he just cared about getting in behind the defence, getting in the ball, getting the ball across the goal for the striker. And yeah. that's, that's all he cared about. I, I, yeah. That's and all I love he cared that. about. I love that because, like, obviously, the run of play, defense, the defence are running backwards. Yeah. So I know as they're running backwards, I've got a great chance of scoring a goal because I'm going forward and I know Matty's going to put that ball straight yeah. across there. Yeah. So if I get across my defender, I'm going to score. Yeah. Yeah, the quality of his crossing as well was always on point. Always, like, on, like, always, on always point. like he was able to just lift it like perfectly, Definitely like, like no matter what the player, pace. Very underrated, that massively, and that's why he stayed at, so long at Stoke as well because yeah. they didn't realize what he done. Like he just made sure that he got the ball in the box for the striker, and he had a great career doing his job. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Marla, who would you say was the best player you ever played with from your time at West Ham? Oh God, I mean, it's a lot to choose from, isn't it? There Teddy, is, there's Carlton. loads. Colton, Javier, Hayden, Nigel. Hayden. 
Carlos. Carlos. Yeah. But I would, if I had to choose someone, it would have to be Yossi. Yossi. Yossi Ben Ayoub. Yeah. Ooh. Love I would that. not. I did not see that. Come on. Yeah. He's so just skillful, so, technically yeah, everything. gifted. Yeah, and, and just the, his, his old personality as well. And yeah, everything he was involved. a top, he was, top boy. He, he couldn't do any more much for any, Is that the word? He can do... He, he wanted to do everything for everybody. Yeah, yeah. And he just looked after everybody. He went the extra mile, he did. Yeah. He and did. on the pitch, he's just a little genius. Yeah. So I think just the whole little thing. Yeah, so he's top man. Yeah. Yeah. Great pick. Well, Marlon, so many great times in Claret and Blue. Let's remind ourselves of your best bits. Tomorrow, lovely flick to Howard. What a goal! It's a fantastic goal by Marlon Howard. Samora's flick, but Howard's finish was exquisite. Hetherington with space here. Oh, and they're ahead early on. Marlon Howard breaking onto that. United caught cold, and it was a beautifully executed goal. Held on towards Howard! Marlon Howard gives West Ham United the lead. They're 12 minutes away from their first FA Cup final in 26 years. Ashton guarding it on. Howard held off his man. Sheringham, Etherington, and Howard! That could be a turning point in West Ham's season. Oh, that was coming, John. And you can't deny that West Ham have deserved it in the second half. Great one-two. What a great finish that is. Lovely. Some great goals there. Marlon, you're, you're proper angry at that Arsenal, that <laughs> Arsenal goal. Yeah, I was, I what, was. Why? Because I'm a sub. Pards didn't play me. I could see the game going on and nothing was in it. Yeah. And I could see Pards like, looking back. <laughs> you know when you like, the, the up his to, yeah, to that see was one of those celebrations like, like I told you should have started me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't yeah. ever do that again, yeah. son. It was. <laughs> Just like that. It yeah, was. It was like yeah. that. And then Pards and Wenger started having a little fight. Yeah, yeah. I did, you, that. did you know about that at the no, time? No, I didn't. Until we sat down and then it come up on the on the big screen. Like you know, like Sky Sports when oh, it goes yeah. through all the games and yeah. stuff. Oh what, so late, later on in the day, you saw there was having a proper little lover's tiff, wasn't it? Uh, well, up next, one of your former teams, Aston Villa. Let's have a look at the head-to-head. -head. And here's the last six games. West Ham shading it. Two wins to Villa's one. Those two wins coming, one in February 2014, the other in February 2016. Both 2 nil victories. Marlon, I'm sure every West Ham fan is familiar with Aston Villa's form at the moment, for obvious reasons. How do you see this one going? Um, Obviously, it's nice for nice feeling for West Ham to be going into. Um, so, but the, with the form that they've been going on, I think West Ham will just will just nick it. Um, but I don't know, really. It's a bit hard one because Villa Villa need a win. So I think they're going to be all guns blazing to try and try and uh, try and apply the win from us. Carlton, if you're in that dressing room, you've got we've secured safety off the season we've had. Are you, you going to have a bit of fire in your belly to at the opportunity to relegate Villa on Sunday? Of course, like, <laughs> I wouldn't put it like that to relegate Villa. <laughs> I wouldn't put it like that. To... But you have to have pride in your football. You've got to go out there, make sure that you put your best performances your job. just and do your job. Mm. And um, look, we, you don't want to end any season on a low and you don't want to be losing a game that you're supposed to be winning. Um, look, Villa, they need the points, obviously, but... Yeah they should have sorted it out before they got to us. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not, and, and, and it's vice versa. They wouldn't go easy on us if it was the other way around. So why should it happen the other way? So obviously, you weren't word, word it easier, but it's, obviously yeah. but, both teams are going to go to But you got to look at Antonio win. wants his form. He, I think he's trying to break a record or something. I don't know what he's trying ten, to do. Ten goals, yeah, it's ten yeah, goals. He's done ten, he wants to get 11. So, so he's, he ain't going to go. He's, he wants to play, he wants to go hard. Um, but it just depends what um, David Moyes wants to do if he wants to let somebody else have a game or anything like that. But I, I, I wouldn't change the team. I'll just let the boys finish off this game Play, the way yeah. they, in, in, in spectacular form. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Marlon, like, looking back over the course of like West Ham history, when, on the last game of the season, if there's nothing to play for, sometimes we pull out an amazing result. Thinking about the end of the 95 season when we drew with mm. uh, Manchester United to deny them the title. In your era, last game of the season before the FA Cup, we played Spurs. They needed the Champions League spot. We beat them. Yeah. Like, we'd pull out an unbelievable effort. So do you think like this Sunday, West Ham going to pull out a superhuman effort to... Take Villa down? <laughs> Are you worth it? Take Villa down. I'm trying to get the headline for inside no, no, Marlon. No, Villa no. must go down. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not going to happen. But I, I just feel that West Ham, on their performances against Man United, they're just going to carry it on into that game, and yeah. I think they're going to they're going to be good. Um, and Villa are going to struggle to get that win out of them that they need. Well, let, let's let me pressure for a prediction. Then, what's the score going to be? Uh, two one. To West Ham. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Uh, Carlton, last week you said uh, that we would beat Watford 2 1. It was 3 1. You're pretty close. Yeah, How did you see the Villa game? Well, and I said we'd beat Man United and it was 1 1, so that didn't go too well. It was okay. We didn't lose, but I'll go on this one. I'm going to go a draw, you know. A draw? Yeah, mm. I think a draw is fair. I think they're going to be yeah. goals. I reckon they're definitely well, going to be goals. For Villa's sake, they need goals, but we've got goal scorers, so we're so, fine. But um, let's say 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. Let's say 2-2. Two, two. I think, um, yeah, we want to wanna win the game all the time. You have just but literally sat on the fence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Big yeah fat he's sat, sat on the fence more than you, and you've got more reason to. Yeah, I know. But I, I are your customers? 2-1. Two, 2-1. One. Two, well, one. I've, I've got an affinity to, to Watford because I want Hayden Mullins because he's the interim yeah. manager. Yeah. yeah. And he's West Ham, do you know what I mean? And then I've got an affinity to... To Villa as well, because yeah, so I played I, a year. I only played a year, I but I, I still got friends down there. Um, but if they were both to come and ask me um, for points, I wouldn't be able to give them. If I had so the points sure. to give, yeah, you wouldn't I, be able to I, give I them. I would share say, it equally. You know but I'm I mean? just I'll going equally. I'm mean? just so going off form. I'm, I'm going off form. But if no. you want to go on form, I'm just going off form. I would want them to win, definitely, yeah. but I wouldn't mind Your wording if we drew. is very good. I wouldn't yeah, yeah. mind he's if been, we drew. He's been doing yeah. well. <laughs> you, you, you should take a leaf out of his book. He's, been he's done wording. really well there. Very conservative. <laughs> very conservative. His yeah. wording. Make sure you don't get any splinters on your bum sitting on that fence. <laughs> 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 hey, I've got a sore already. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, our next guest is a hugely influential YouTuber. He's the chairman of Hashtag United, and more important than any of that, he's a big fan of West Ham United. We caught up with Spencer Rowan. All right, mate, how you doing? And welcome to a brand new series on my channel. It's crazy. It's absolutely mental. Welcome to the show, Spencer Owen. Look at that in your brand new West Ham shirt. How's the fit? I'm not going to lie. No one's told me to say this. This is the most comfortable West Ham shirt I've ever worn. It's, <laughs> it's lovely on the skin, isn't it, Spence? Lovely on the skin. Especially when you put baby oil on. <laughs> Honestly, I'm broke. Well done. Smashed it. Yeah, you know what? it's just a classic kit. That's what you want out of a West Ham kit. Certainly what I want. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. And the, the colours feel like, I mean, I've, I've liked all of our recent kits, to be fair, but the colours feel really vibrant on this one, like proper claret and blue, really pop it. And it just, I'm like, I sound like I, I should be advertising clothes, boy. <laughs> I, was about, I was just about to say how much mate, you, mate, I was you, about you, to say how much you're getting. Are you working for our <laughs> <laughs> Well, Spencer, I'm sure you've said to me before that your favourite kit was West Ham's centenary kit, 95-97, the one with like, the Victorian-style collar, which I think is one of the worst kits we've ever made. You know, I like the, I like the map. I think it's, cause it's like got the Harry Hill collar on it. Um, <laughs> Harry Hill collar. <laughs> it was a weird one, actually. I'm not, I'm not proud of this, but I got it when I was like 10, and it still fit me when I was like 18. <laughs> <laughs> Bag off. Crazy. What was funny is I had Ferdinand on the back and it worked for three during the time I had it, we had three different Ferdinands at the club, so it kept getting reused. It was like Rio, then it was uh, Les, Les and then it was Anton, I think. Um but yeah. No, that's the favourite kit of mine. I like the white old Intertoto Cup kit back in the day. Um but I mean in terms of Clara and Blue Home, like this genuinely is the most comfortable, maybe not even West Ham kit. I'm I'm not joking. This might be the most comfortable football kit I've ever worn. Wow. That's, that's nice. That's a nice wow. compliment. Good, good saying. Get that quote on a poster at the club shop now. <laughs> uh, uh, Spencer, I've asked this of a few of our guests on here who've got maybe divided loyalties, but you're the chairman of Hashtag United. Who are you more? Are you more of a West Ham man or a Hashtag United man, if you had to choose? Oh, I, I get asked that question a lot, you know. It's impossible to say. I have such a different relationship with both. You know, like, obviously, West Ham's been a massive part of my life since I was born. Hashtag come along more recently. One, I am very much, you know, on the outside looking in as season ticket holder, just 
you know, as a, a fan experience at West Ham. The other I'm very much in control of. Like, if the day comes, we are hopefully going to be in the FA Cup for the first time this year. So if we smash it and the day comes, you get hashtag versus West Ham, we've done a very good job. And uh, that will be, then I'll have to answer that question. But for now, the only thing I would say is, as a result of running the club, I haven't been able to get to as many West Ham games as recently as I'd like to, because they usually they clash, you know, Saturday football and all that. Um, but there's no doubt in my mind, like whenever I watch West Ham, I'm obviously so excited to see us. And all the more recently, these results we've got, you know, I'm buzzing. So I'm always going to be bleeding claret and blue. And how have you found these last run of games since the restart? I mean, it started a little bit shaky, but it has been very enjoyable. I'm not going to lie. I, I wasn't, I was worried. I was definitely worried uh, after those first few games, but unbelievable turnaround. Like that, the Man United result is like the icing on the cake. I know we like technically needed it to, to officially stay up, although I think we would have been fine. Um, I didn't see it coming, I'll be honest. Even with the recent results, Man United have been flying as well. And just so happy, so proud of the boys. That there's a few lads, like particularly, that I think have just absolutely risen to the occasion. Obviously, Antonio has been a joke. Like what? A, 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 what? I would say discovery. We played him up front a fair bit in the past, but he has probably like shown that he could do a job there as our out and out striker. Uh, Declan Rice has been unreal. Really impressed with Johnson last few games as well. He's had to come in. You know, like I'm just so happy. I, I, I didn't think I'd be feeling this way. I'll be honest. I'm usually a bit of an optimist. But yeah. I, I thought we were going to be in trouble. So, so happy we've turned it around. Yeah, and as well, Mikel Antonio, the strength, the power, the pace. He really reminds me of a striker we used to have called Marlon Harewood. Do you remember him? Hey. I remember and him. And they both from the Forest as well. Forest? Yeah. Uh, Spencer, who is your favourite ever West Ham player? I, I think probably because of the era I grew up and the goals he scored, I think it still remains Paolo Di Canio. Um, just, yeah, I mean, some of the goals he scored and like he... He really took us in his heart as well. You know, he's got the West Ham tattoo and he's always, he's always up there for my favourite players. But you've got to look at Mark Noble as well. Like, again, through my era of, of, of fandom, he has just been so reliable for us for so long. Still putting in some good performances as well, you know. Um, and then, it's, it's definitely between those two. But in terms of one, like, player that is the best player I've ever seen, it has to be Dimitri Payet. As much as you know, we, we wouldn't have uh, we would have liked him liked him to stay around a bit longer. And there was it. It wasn't as long a relationship as we'd have liked it to be, and didn't necessarily end the way we'd like it to be. Um, that's often the way relationships go. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Spencer, your favourite ever West Ham match. What's the one that you're like? That was a high water mark. Well, I think the obvious one would be the final game at, at the Bowling. You know, it, it wasn't a. It wasn't a cup final, it wasn't a playoff final, which would be another one that the two playoff finals we won. But it was so special. Like, it, it was, you can get another playoff final, you know. You're never going to have another last game at the bowling. And the fact that we won it against a team like Man United, who had been the dominant team in my lifetime, got up to that point. It was like, uh, and at the time I was, I was making, you know, I make a lot of videos on YouTube and I was vlogging all my games and I, I made a video out of it. And still looking back now, I've been really lucky to do some unbelievable things in my career and stuff. But I think that's one of my favourite videos I've made as well because you just can't, you can't buy that situation. You've got a stadium full of people like basically in tears. You're like, you know, I'm looking around, I've got my dad, I've got my brothers with me. We win in the fashion that we did as well against such a good team. Um, and just the emotions and all the, the kind of processions that happened after the game and being before the game, you know, in the, in the, in the rows around the, the stadium and seeing all the, the memories we knew were never going to be the same again. Um, that would always be, I think, the most amazing game I've, I've been to from West Ham perspective. Fantastic stuff. So, Villa on Sunday. For months, it looked like this game was going to be the most nerve-wracking oh, afternoon no. for West Ham fans in a long time. But the pressure's off. Spencer, how do you see it going? Well, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because obviously Villa are fighting for their lives. And, you know, they've, got, they've put themselves in a great position to potentially stay up after that result against Arsenal. Whereas we have done really well that, like you say, this game doesn't really mean as much for us anymore. I've always had this thing, it's, it's completely childish and unnecessary, but I always liked them we're the only claret and blue team in the Prem. <laughs> <laughs> that, means, that, means, that means you'd rather Watford stay up then, right? That's what I'm saying. Like, and obviously Burnley, <laughs> are still, Burnley are still going to be in the league as well anyway, so it doesn't make a difference. Oh, yeah, right? yeah so. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Thanks for joining us, Spencer. Is there anything you want to add about this brilliant kit? Any more superlatives you want to offer before we sign off? <laughs> yeah, it just feels great on the skin. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I suggest you get the baby oil out. Get the baby oil, it feels better. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Lovely stuff. Thanks for joining us, Spencer. Thank Cheers, you, guys. Take care. Cheers. Cheers. Spencer Rowe in there, and that West Ham United home shirt is available from the club shop now. They haven't asked us to say that. I don't know why. He just keeps, he yeah, keeps promoting saying it. it. Keep on just promoting to be clear. Nice <laughs> but it is a nice shirt. Get down to the store. <laughs> now. It feels very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Put some baby oil in this year. Feels a lot better. Right, Aston Villa up next. We were, we were going to show our top five goals against the villains, but we decided we'd put... Marlon's hat trick from 2006 in, in there, there alongside two other of our favourites. So here are our top five goals against the Villains. Hamlet did well. Sheringham's got it back to him. It's Marlon Hamlet for West Ham United and he scores. Well, the pressure has paid off. All sorts of pushing and shoving. It's Alberto Solano, it's in! Carson got fingertips to it but could not keep it out. Solano does not want to celebrate against his former club. Ellington's corner. Ferdinand. And a touch in. My goodness. It's all going right for West Ham United. And it's going magnificently for Marlon Harewood. And Benny Yoon. He's been splendid oh. and has a goal to show for it. It's 4-0. Well, what a fantastic piece of skill and finish. Pressure on the Villa goal from Etherington. Simonson reaches, doesn't get there. <laughs> Goodness me. There it is for Marlon Harewood. Three for West Ham, three for him. Talk about being in the right place at the right time. Cracking stuff, some great goals there against Aston Villa. Right, Marlon, you're up next on our Word Association game. I'm going to throw some former players, some former teammates of yours, former managers, West Ham related names at you. Just want a few words off the top of your head of what you think of those men. Okay. Okay. Roy Carroll. Lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel Rio Coker. Captain. Alan Pardew. <laughs> uh, I had to Chocolate. There you go. Uh, yeah, again. <laughs> Alan Kerbishley. Oh, Charlton. Charlton. <laughs> oh. A lot went on. A lot went on that day. A lot went on that day. <laughs> Stephen Bywater. Are you trying to be diplomatic? Are you trying to? Yeah, say, yeah. <laughs> Just Very say what's diplomatic. on your mind. Just say what's on your mind. I, I love Bywater. I love say what's him. on your mind. Um, Mind you, he just bought a car off you, I saw that. Yeah, no, he did. <laughs> <laughs> and a very expensive I one as well. I saw it as well. The Mercedes. <laughs> I saw it, mate. <laughs> Food. Christian Daly. Gentleman. Mark Noble. Legend. Oh. Teddy Sheringham. Smooth. Carlos Tevez. Genius. Genius. Bobby Zamora. Be careful, we've got you on a few holidays as well, isn't he? <laughs> The yeah. football escapes. He's got you on a few of those. Uh, another, but... another business Marlon's invited. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> fishing. 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 <laughs> yeah, that's true. He loves a bit of fishing. James Tompkins. Come on, Marlon. Strong. Strong. Lionel Scaloni. Liability. <laughs> <laughs> Lionel. Anton Ferdinand. Lips. <laughs> Lips, yeah. <laughs> David Connolly. Farmer. Farmer. <laughs> <What? laughs> Why? Because he just always looks scruffy. <laughs> like a farmer. Yossi ben -Ayun. Um Genius. Lastly, Carlton Cobb. It's hard, now right? because I've <laughs> literally... I don't even know what word for him, because I've said, <laughs> I said legend. Enigma. I said, I said every, cause, because more and more, the last two years, I've got to know him. He's an absolute um, god. I can call him A god? god. Whoa. 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 Never, hey, do you know what, bro? You've gone up into my estimations. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I take that. <laughs> Oh wait, he's going to flog your car after yeah. this. He's just building you up. <laughs> he's just buttering me up, isn't he? <laughs> no, but I seriously, mean. the last two years, no, obviously us three doing what we do and then knowing Colton, he's just gone up my the estimations. The footballer's guy to football, by the way, yeah. yeah. Gone up in my estimations and how you are, how you present yourself and what you're about and what you're doing and how you, everything's just been decent. Thank you, Miles. Oh, I'll take that. So it's I'll been take good. That. Thank a, you. What a lovely uh, note to yeah. end on. Hey, come, 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 come. <laughs> Let's have a hug. Let's have a hug. <laughs> That's all Thank good, you. mate. Anytime, bro. <laughs> Cheers, pal. <laughs> Cracking stuff. Thank you to our guests, Marlon Harewood. Thank you, Colton. And also Thomas Suchek and Spencer Owen. That's it for episode five of Inside Irons. We'll be back 
hopefully very soon. Aston Villa, 4pm on Sunday. Fingers crossed we end this season on a high. Come on, you Irons. Yeah.